Well, good morning. Good to be with you today. Where do we find ourselves this morning? Unsure? Questions? Concerns? My message title for this morning is Embrace the Unknown. Let's pray. Father God, whatever we are facing or thinking or feeling, God, you come and you stand with us. At times in the uncertainty and, and, and the sadness. But we trust in you. We trust in your unfailing love. And as you lead us and guide us over these next weeks and months, Father God, I thank you that you are our God that you have done the miraculous, that you have opened doors of opportunity and will continue to do so for us as friends and family and individuals and as a church community as we continue to bring some living hope to this community and beyond these walls and across our state and across the nation and countries in which we bless because of Jesus. So God, this morning, hear my words. May they be yours. May what I say honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to focus on a few biblical characters today who know what it's like to embrace the unknown and find a faithful, dependable God who meets them there. We're going to touch on the story of Noah and Abraham and Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth. Noah built an ark. It's in the Old Testament, Genesis 6. A few verses from there to, to set the scene, if you know the story. Who remembers the felt boards from, yeah, good, yep, yep, we're in good company, yes. <laughs> As a Sunday school, they never would stick on. Whose idea was that? But it worked, and you remembered. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become. Is he looking down now? For all the earth, people of the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make for yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it, with, coat it with pitch inside and out. Now, I would have had a few questions. Don't know about you. I would have had a few questions about how, or how all this was going to happen. Excuse me, God, what's an ark? Might have been a good place to start. But God comes and he tells Noah how it all must happen, if you know the story. Imagine building something that was unknown. The comments, the looks. Where's dad going? Oh, he's gone out the back to build the ark again. The people passing by, pointing and staring. Oh, I've seen old Nari, he's up to something. Apparently God's told him and he's building a boat. Animals arriving. Telling your family that God had clearly spoken to you and this was from him. As ridiculous as it looked or sounded, that he is going to save us just our family, his sons and wives and, and all these animals. Noah was 600 years old when he went into the ark. 
600. We know they lived longer then, but that's still a number. How's those hips? Rain, flooding, water springing up from the ground, 40 days, 40 nights, weeks and months floating along. Now what? The ark finally comes to rest, if you know, on Mount Ararat. It's now in Turkey, modern day Turkey. They estimate they were probably flo floating and, I was going to say sailing, but they're not really, they're bobbing. <laughs> probably about a year, maybe a bit longer. And in Genesis 8 1. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. Friend, God remembered Noah. And God remembers me. And God remembers you. When we're feeling forgotten, floating along in life, wondering where God is, he remembers us. Genesis 8, 6 to 12. <clears throat> After 40 days, Noah opened a window he'd made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Verse 8, then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground, but that old dove couldn't find anywhere to perch because there was water over all the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself inside the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Hope, friend. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. And in the unknown place, there will be times of waiting and then times of hope and times of blessing as God sustains us. In Genesis 12, we hear of Abram, he's called at this time. Leave your country. Leave your people. Leave all you know. Leave your culture. Leave your language. Leave. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land that I will show you. Great. Friends, God wants to honour movement. God wants to honour obedience. Leave what you know. But God's plan and God's way is always the best way as we stand in these unknown places. Because in verse 2, we read this, I will make you into a great nation. And I'll bless you and I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. <clears throat> I'll bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. So go. Take your family to a place that I will show you. Go. Because I can be trusted. Verse 4, so Abram went as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. There is no age limit. Who's glad about that? Be open to hearing God's voice, seeing him move and work and direct our life. 
Be faithful and obedient. Embrace the unknown. Question for us this morning, who are we taking on the journey? Who is God sending our way? Who is coming with us as we move ahead over these months and years and see our property develop and see new opportunities for ministry and mission and housing and hope? Hear me this morning. Take the right people into the unknown. And see what God can do as he leads us and blesses us and uses us. In Ephesians 3.20, now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. But when we feel stuck, And when we feel disappointed and when we feel we're in this unknown place, these are the verses that are hard to read and hard to hear. And according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. For it's his power at work as we be his hands and feet. Honoring him, serving him, being about Jesus, sharing him. Trust him in those unknown places. In the first chapter of Luke in the Gospels there, Zechariah and Elizabeth were childless. But God did a miracle. God did a miracle. And a number of you have known the miracles of God in your lives. John, Jesus' cousin, was coming into the world. John will prepare the way and say, Behold, here comes the Lamb of God. And we read from verse 6 of Luke 1. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God observing the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless. Because Elizabeth was not able to conceive. And they were both very old. Don't underestimate. Don't underestimate what God can do. An angelic visit is hard to comprehend. It's unknown. You might become speechless. And in verse 11 to 17, then the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. Angels seem to do that for some reason. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. Zechariah, your prayers have been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. We turn over a couple of other pages, there's another birth that's pretty special as well. Verse 15, for he'll be great in the sight of the Lord. He'll never take wine or other fermented drink, and he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit even, even from birth. Wow. 
That's miraculous. That's amazing. A lot to take in. I hope he was taking notes. Becoming a parent, it can be a bit unknown at the best of times. There was a lot there. A lot riding on this sun. In verse 18 to 20, Zechariah asks the angel, how can this be? How can I be sure of this? A bit like Mary, if you look. How can this be? How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. We don't have babies. At this age. Then the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I'm just not nobody. I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at their appointed time. Embrace the unknown. Embrace the hard and the difficult and the sad and the annoying and let God come and meet us in that place. Story after story, page after page, throughout God's word, we see that he is there. There at work. We have questions. We have concerns. There are twists and turns, but God's message prevails. His truth and his word speak forth to us. Saw this the other day. Perfection is not the goal, if you were wondering, anyone? Perfection is not the goal. Walking with God is knowing God, following God, listening to God, obeying God. These are the things you were made for. Walk with him, know him, follow him, obey him, listen to him and journey with him and let us embrace the unknown. And as I finish this morning from Psalm 121, write it down, stick it on your fridge. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let us embrace the unknown. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you will walk with us, that you will come and stand with us. The news might be hard to hear, but you have the best plan and the best way. Help us to walk with you, to listen and obey. I thank you that you are writing a message across our story of faith, hope, and love. Amen. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Michael. Let's stand and sing, God, you're so good. Amazing love that welcomes.
loves me, the kindness of mercy.